one of the things that we're here to talk about is the Monterey Pop Festival, which obviously I wasn't old enough to attend. Um, but I, you know, in doing the research on it, it's pretty amazing because it feels like it was, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the first multi-day festival with all the bands in the United States. Yeah, I think it was certainly the first major festival. Uh, and the first three days. Which for you was obviously a nice blueprint for... Yeah, it's great when someone puts the blueprint in front of you. So. <laughs> um, and if people don't know, you are one of the co-founders of Coachella. Correct. What was the genesis of the festival actually? Like, what made you guys even think of doing it back then? Uh, I think the first even thought of doing something like that was... Uh, a couple of months before the festival, we were at um, Mama Cass, Cass Elliott from the Mamas and Papas house. Um, it was myself, Paul McCartney, John Phillips from the Mamas and Papas, and Michelle. And the conversation was that uh, rock and roll wasn't considered an art form in the same way that folk was and jazz was. And then uh, about two months later, um, we were approached uh, by a promoter to do, uh, for the Mamas and Papas to headline a one night at Monterey. Um, a man by the name of Alan Pariser had gone to uh, the jazz festival at Monterey and he thought uh, it would be great to do rock and roll in the same venue, which was the Monterey Fairgrounds. And one thing led to another, and then John and I started thinking about it. We said, let's make it three days. Let's make it for a charity. I mean, it didn't happen that quick, but mm -hmm. those were the ideas that were thrown around. What was the first concert you ever went to? Uh, Roy Rogers, I think. Wow. Uh, tumbling Tumbleweeds. It was either him or Hopalong Cassidy, one of those. Uh, what was the first concert you went to? Uh, like arena type was Tom Petty, Super Bowl Sunday, 1980. At the Whoa. forum. Wow. I remember there's two ticket prices when we stood in line. Eight fifty or nine fifty at Ticketron. And we're like, Well of course eight fifty. Why would you pay nine fifty? Wow. And if you had a choice. If you have a choice. <laughs> then when we got there we understood why. You know, we're up at the top. But uh yeah, it's uh it's not as cool as Hopalong Cassidy, but um Tom Petty's pretty great. Yeah, Tom Petty is great. Oh, you got him again. Tom. Yeah, we have him again. We, uh, we're doing him at a festival in Pasadena next month, Royal Seiko, and uh, with uh, Mumford and Sons. It's going to mm. be pretty cool. Mm. What was your first concert, actually? It was a hip-hop concert. Um, I was in my teens. I think it was Eric B. and Rakim. Oh, wow. Which Rakim was my favorite rapper at the time. So I couldn't believe I actually made it. But um, that was my first. Paid in full. Yeah. Lou owned, owns the Roxy, so that was an incredible time during the hair band era. Wow. Yeah. On, the, on the sidewalk, because there was three clubs, you know, Whiskey, Roxy, and uh, uh, Gazzari's. And we were doing punk shows at the Roxy, or, yeah. or the Whiskey at the time. And the hair bands were just so huge. And it was the coolest thing, passing out flyers, the bands, they all dressed like women. You know, it was kind of like the the glam rock mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. and the sidewalk would just be knee deep in flyers because all the band members and it'd be Guns N' Roses, mm -hmm. LA Guns, they'd all be out there, the band members themselves. And it, that was a fun time just to watch from the punk side of it. Mm -hmm. They are they're just dominating. Yeah, I can imagine like being old enough to party on Sunset Boulevard when all the bands were coming up must have been a wild Wild oh, time. You couldn't walk on the sidewalk. Yeah, you couldn't walk on the sidewalk. And what was great is it was the band members passing out the flyers. Yeah. And they were making wow. the ads. Wow. It was a real, uh, it, was a, it was a fun time in music to watch. Now you guys are doing the Monterey Pop Festival with different artists. Are you, are the artists that are on uh, this particular show inspired by the feeling of that show? Or is it just what you think today people will come see? No, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean... Almost every artist, and I think, is knows about that. Those artists, um, the uh, the girl from Alabama Shakes, which is playing a Royal Seiko, actually, I'm sure she's listened to Janis Joplin. She's the know. best human on planet uh, Earth. We've had her on the show, Brittany. Yeah. So great, yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, other than that, it's, uh, you know, uh, Golden Voice, Paul's Company, and Another Planet out of San Francisco. The Outside Lands people. And All right. Looking at it. And uh, it's a variety show. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of acts on there. If you go down to Headliners, and, uh, or on Sunday night, Phil Lesh from The Grateful Dead, and then right after that, Gary Clark Jr. You know, so yeah. Wow. Well. And the headliners in 67 were uh, Mamas and the Papas. Simon and Garfunkel. And uh, Otis, Otis Redding. Redding. And oh. that was because uh, Beach Boys dropped Beach out. Beach Boys dropped out. Yeah. What's amazing is 50 years later, festivals are hotter than ever. It's kind of funny. It's an art form that, in a way, was kind of birthed there. Mm-hmm. And it's still paying dividends across the globe, you know? Now dealing with curating Coachella, which you know, there's so many different bands. How do you stay on top of what music you like? I mean, I'm sure when you first started out, it was the bands that you loved. Yeah. And now it, it's probably, and, and I'm putting words in your mouth, but I'm assuming that it's, how do I make everybody else happy? Yeah, it's, it's, it's harder now, I'll, I'll admit. At the, it was just simple at the time for me. So I was, like you said, just was booking just what I liked. And uh, as, as music per, you know, progresses now, there's just so many more artists, obviously. Right. And, you know, you could ask me now, hey, 30 years ago, you know, I was in a band called this. I'm like, well, yeah, I never heard of it. And I'm calling you on that because you really weren't in a band, you know, <laughs> because right. I knew all the bands at that point. Right. Now there's so many. It's really, it's really hard to keep up. And uh, so I get friends who will say, how can you not know this artist? I'm like, how can you know thousands of artists? You know, hmm. it, you just got to do your best. And I hang out with a lot of friends. I was just going to say, like, That's the you have thing. to put so much trust in the people around you that they understand yeah. who is that person or, wh- or what. I love to research, you know, like anybody. You know, I love listening. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I hit, all the, hit all the things. And, uh, you know, I listen and write it down and ask them people, hey, what do you think of this? You know, and because I, I'm at a concert company year-round, we promote um, f- um, 1,400 concerts a year. So it's like I'm seeing a lot of data. I'm just going to the shows. I'm hearing the staff in the in the office say, "Oh, yeah, I, you know, this was great last night." Right. And uh, friends and neighbors, you know, uh, I actually live next to uh, Lou Adler, mm. and uh, <laughs> he's got an incredible set of kids that send me bands all the time. Wow. And uh, it's amazing. And each of them has a separate type of music. Yeah. So it's really funny. Like, you know, I, sometimes I call them by their stage Hmm. a Coachella name you know like (laughs) Sahara I mean Oscar and uh, so they uh, you know they're always sending me stuff like that and and my staff too and how how did back then did you pretty much the same you had to you know get the input from different people because uh, no internet uh, (laughs) yeah but uh, the exposure of a thousand bands is much now you know that everybody's getting some kind of exposure at that point in L.A., we had uh, one R&B station uh, and two pop stations. So you didn't hear a lot of music and because they were all playing 13 records an hour. Uh, mm. You heard a certain amount of music. But, for example, when uh, Jimi Hendrix and The Who, uh, Paul McCartney suggested that we go, we hadn't, uh, John Phillips and myself hadn't heard them yet. We knew Hendrix a little bit, but we hadn't heard The Who. And he said, you ought to get these two bands. Um, it was the same thing, input, you know, different people that heard bands. You had to listen, and if, uh, you know, you believed that they knew what they were talking about, then you went with them. We were trying to expose every genre that was being played on the air at that point. That's why we ended up with uh, uh, Ravi Shankar, uh, Hugh Masekela, uh, it was Artist w- worldwide. Yeah. To, to this day, that's one of the most varied lineups of all festivals. 50 years later, it's still, none of us, uh, 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 the festival promoters, are not going as deep as that one show did 50 years ago. It's kind of amazing when you look at R- Ravi Shankar and all the different ones, you know, Hendrix. It's like on the, on the same bill, and it, and it working. Had it worked? When are you going to release all the live performances of Coachella? <laughs> um, you know, I'd love to someday. 
we've been so busy with putting a different festivals together. It's mm-hmm. so hard to go back and compile all that, but at some point we will for sure. You know, there's so many great performances. You know, just it's crazy. Prince, Prince. Mm. You know, when you said Dr. Dre, just that whole yeah. hologram year was just incredible. You know, uh, Jimmy Iovine helped us put that together. You know, uh, years ago we had um, Black Sabbath had canceled at the last second before we announced, and uh, an agent called me up and said, "What do you want to do?" I'm like, "Well, let's try to get Dr. Dre and Snoop." He's like, "You got like." 48 hours to put this together to, you should shoot a little lower you know and he's like I go well, let's, let's try it Jimmy uh, arranged a meeting at his house on a Sunday night in Holmby Hills and got Dre and a bunch of people together and uh, we made a pitch wow and uh, we had done I'd done NWA in 1987 at the Hollywood Palladium opening for uh, UTFO and Heavy D and the Boys and Salt and Pepper wow, wow. <laughs> it was great and uh so we kind of talked about that for a little bit. He didn't know a whole lot about Coachella. I explained it to him. He's like, yeah, I kind of like it. It's like, when do you need to know? I'm like, right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm here on a Sunday, you know? And uh, he, he didn't say hologram, but he's like, got a 3D thing. You know, he, he had some ideas. It's going to cost some money. I go, yeah, let's, let's do it. And then it was, well, it's going to cost more. I'm like, well, let's go. You know, like, let's, <laughs> let's figure this out, you know? And, uh, Wait, that all happened in 48 hours? It happened in an hour when, after we got, the, yeah, that wow. Sunday night. And, um, so, That's even more impressive. Yeah, l- laid it all out, talked a little bit of money, and uh, he said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And as soon as I got the yes, I got out of there. Like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> like, once I get a yes, you're seeing the back of my head, you know? And uh, then it was 10 times better than I thought, you know, what he pulled off. For someone who did something at the last minute, you would mm-hmm. think it might be sketchy, yeah. and it was just excellent. I guess he had this in his head for a lo- for a while, looking for a platform. Yeah, so I, I got to give yeah I got to give points to Jimmy for hooking that up. And were you there? Uh, when Drake? No, I heard oh. about it though. Yeah, that was like a a big yeah. moment for us.